Professor Peniel Joseph is an expert on civil rights and has written extensively about the health care bill and says it's in many ways analogous to civil rights. You've been hearing a lot about these analogies of late. Uh, so let me bring, in him, bring him in. Professor, thanks so much for being with us, sir. Thanks for having me. How, how do you compare this bill to the civil rights legislation under uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson? Well, certainly, in 1964, the Civil Rights Act is passed, but the real comparison is really 1965, where not only the Voting Rights Act is passed, but Medicare and Medicaid, and there's national immigration reform. Um, when we think about the Civil Rights Movement, we usually think about that as just a movement by black people to liberate themselves. But it's really a wider movement to reimagine American democracy and expansively redefine what the very nature of our democracy will mean for all citizens. But, this is, a, but this is a clear difference, though, because, you know, uh, I have to make the argument that how can you compare something like... Uh, health care reform mm -hmm. with something that literally gave people rights that prior to that they did not even have it, you know uh, how do you make that comparison well the comparison is this we're talking about a continuation and the evolution of American democracy when we think about historically what did civil rights and the Voting Rights Act mean for all Americans it was about transform transforming fundamental rights for citizens that were African-American, but really about reimagining what kind of United States of America we were going to have. Um, the, vo the Voting Rights Act of 1965 is about more than just the right to vote. It's actually about how do we define citizenship and democracy, not just for African-Americans, but for all Americans. When we and, think you think about and you think this bill does the same thing? Well, certainly. In, in, it's an evolution and a continuation of how do we define American citizenship. By making health care uh, not just a privilege, but a right for all Americans, it continues that evolution in terms of American society. Uh, in 1965, Lyndon Johnson talked about a great society. In the 45 years since that great society, we, we've had very few presidents who are willing to talk about hmm. expansively redefining what does it mean to be an American citizen in the 21st century. Candidate Barack Obama in 2008 um, had that famous race speech on March 18th where he talked about towards a more perfect union. And the health care bill certainly brings American democracy towards a more perfect union where there's going to be social and political and economic justice and opportunity for all. It's a fair argument. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, since you're an expert, a professor, and have written extensively on civil rights, is this a coincidence that this president is tackling issues that supposedly affect the poor black and brown community? Is he doing that for political reasons uh, because those folks vote? Or if not, why? why? Why is he doing this? Well, I think, I think it's for political and moral reasons. When we think about health care in the 21st century, it really is part of a moral crusade. And on this score, uh, Barack Obama has proven to be, um, in a way, he talked about Ronald Reagan during the campaign, and Reagan transformed our democracy by really scaling back on the New Deal. Uh, well, let through, me ask you. Through, well, through tax cuts. In, in 82 and 86, what we're seeing right now is a president who believes in an activist state uh, in a very subdued and typically but, understated but, but way. An, but, if it's a, but hold on. If it's an activist state, does mm -hmm. that mean Republicans are all saying, by doing this, you Democrats are going to be voted out of office in the midterms? And the president keeps telling us that he doesn't care. He's just trying to do what's right. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people will disagree with that, but either way, is this the type of legislation, like uh, civil rights legislation was in many ways for LBJ, that will hurt the party who puts it in? Well, no, I, I don't think so. I think it's akin to both uh, the Great Society, but also the New Deal. When we think about the 1930s and FDR, the New Deal was really vilified by those on the right who felt that it was socialism. People felt that the Social Security Act, uh, the Wagner Act, that, that these things were going to transform democracy, but in a, in a bad way. It was going to retard uh, people's freedoms to achieve. Uh, when we think about uh, the Great Society, the Great Society mm. had its critics, people who were saying that uh, you're, 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 you're bringing welfare. You're That's just, in the 60s. You're, you're, in, in the 1960s. Right. right now, we see critics on the right and left of this bill, but certainly this is the kind of bill that has galvanized supporters of the president who really did see him as a transform we'll, tra we'll, transformational figure. W we'll one we'll last see. That we'll see. You can say that, but the polls aren't in yet to prove what you just said. But, but one last point, Rick. In, in terms of uh, Barack Obama and the comparisons to Reagan, uh, 
candidate Obama was really Down to criticized. 10 he was really criticized for, for saying he admired Reagan. We're seeing that he believes in the transformative power of communication and government, but to transform equal opportunity for all citizens. You, Professor, are a delight to have a conversation with. You hold your ground, sir. <laughs> I appreciate it. We'll get you back, okay? Definitely. Peniel Joseph, Professor, Tufts University. Here's what else is coming your way.